In this video, we'll start looking at the WKBJ approximation named after uh, Wenzel Kramer and Brillouin, who independently developed it in 1926, and uh, for Jeffries, who developed it under a different context in 1923. Uh, we'll usually refer to it as WKB because that's the convention in quantum mechanics. And this is a method that's, uh, that can be used to estimate bound state energies and tunneling rates in the case where we have uh, slowly varying potentials in one dimension. Uh, these assumptions are usually satisfied when the de Broglie wavelength, uh, which we'll denote by lambda dv, is much smaller than the length scale of the environment, which we'll typically call L. So uh, we would have uh, this kind of situation. In this case, quantum mechanical effects uh, will be less important. Uh, and this is generally known as a semi-classical uh, regime. So the WKB approximation is sometimes also known as the semi-classical approximation. And we'll be able to use the semi-classical notion to develop some intuition for, uh, for wave functions. And, uh, and make some assumptions and approximations that will allow us to solve the Schrodinger equation uh, for uh, or to approximate solutions to the Schrodinger equation in cases where we can't solve it exactly. All right, uh, so we begin with the idea that if we're thinking semi-classically we can say that the total energy of a system is equal to uh, the kinetic energy, which will depend on the momentum in some position X plus the potential energy of the particle. And while this is true in general, we're going to use this uh, semi-classical idea of having what we'll call a local momentum. And quantum mechanically, this uh, doesn't make sense because we can't know the position and momentum of a particle simultaneously, but because we're looking at a semi-classical regime, we're assuming that those effects are uh, somewhat negligible. And if you isolate this local momentum in this equation, you get that this is uh, equal to this quantity. And this quantity will really be central to our WKB, uh, to the development of this WKB approximation. So if we blindly apply this idea to quantum mechanics, uh, we insert this into our time independent Schrodinger equation, which we're denoting by TISE, which says that the square of the position of the momentum operator over 2m plus our potential energy term, this is equal to some energy times our wave function. We'll bring this over to the left-hand side and the 2m. So that we can rewrite the Schrodinger equation in this manner. And here we can identify the square of this local momentum over here. Notice that this is in general a function. Uh, a function of x of the position, while this p is an operator. This, this. So we'll write this with a lowercase p and the operator generally by an uppercase p with a, with a hat. All right, so, so far this expression is exact. This is completely equivalent to the Schrodinger equation 
the only semi-classical idea we're using here is this local momentum. That is, uh, strictly speaking, L-defining quantum mechanics. And notice here that this, this looks like an eigenvalue equation, but it's not exactly an eigenvalue equation because this is in general a function of x, it's not a constant. So it's not really uh, an eigenvalue. So the situation we're looking at, or that we're considering, is we have some potential as a function of x. Uh, and suppose that it looks something like this. So at some position, uh, say x prime, we have a corresponding local momentum px prime. Uh, we'll say that the total energy of the system is somewhere over here. So that classically you would expect the particle to be bound to this region. It would just only be able to go back and forth in this region. And the idea then is if this is if this uh, potential is complicated enough, we won't be able to solve the Schrodinger equation. But what we'll do is we're going to zoom in into a portion of the potential where uh, it will very nearly look like it's constant. So here is, uh, we're zooming into a region where a potential takes on some value V naught, which we're assuming is, is constant. So this over here is V of X. This is V naught. In this case, our local momentum will be roughly equal to the square root of 2m e minus V naught. And we'll call this uh, P naught. And uh, in this particular case, where we have a constant potential, the, uh, the solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation are plane waves or superpositions of plane waves so that they're norm normalizable. which have uh, the following form. Uh, we're ignoring any normalization over here. So this is just uh, our wave functions tend to go uh, as plane waves, which is described by this factor over here. Okay, and this is uh, because what we're dealing with now is an equation of this form. Okay, so for the case where our potential is essentially constant, we expect the solution of the Schrodinger equation to look something like this. Now, if we zoom back out and consider the whole potential, uh, if this is slowly varying enough, uh, so for full potential, if it's slowly varying enough, we can uh, expect that our wave functions will still be very close to plane waves. But now instead of this P naught times X factor, we're going to have some general function of, uh, of X. Okay. 
So we can say that uh, this is kind of an, an educated expectation. So this is our, this is really the main hypothesis of the WKB approximation. And so we're assuming that in a slowly varying potential, our wave functions will take on this form. And our job now is to try to calculate what this S of X is. So in the next video, we'll plug this into our time independent Schrodinger equation and uh, develop this approximation further to try to find what this S of X is equal to.